Hi YouTube, welcome to the Emporium Outdoors. My name is Michael, and today I thought I'd share with you a new purchase I picked up. This is the Princecraft Yukon 140BT with a Honda 25 horse outboard. When I went online, I couldn't find much about these boats. So I thought I'd give you my quick overview of what I've found so far. So I've owned the boat for less than two weeks, so I'm still learning lots of its features and pros and cons, but I'll, I'll show you what I've found so far. So the 140 refers to the length of the boat. This is a 14 foot three boat, and I'll put all the stats up here so I don't have to remember them off by heart, but it's a good sized boat for up to three adults fishing, or maybe two adults and two children. I think the US regulations is a four person boat. I think Canada is it's like a three. They differ slightly and I'll show you that on the plate as well. So why did I choose this boat? I was looking for a 14 foot boat that was a bit of a hybrid. I didn't really want a John boat. I wanted something that could actually go through a little bit of chop. My friend already had a Yukon 140. Um, but it's not the BT model and I'll show you what the differences are. So one of the things I like this boat is the shape of it, it makes it very easy to manoeuvre. It doesn't mind a little bit of chop if it's uh, windy, it copes with it quite well. And I've had a good experiences riding on my friend's boat so I kind of add towards this as well. So let me show you some of the details of the boat. So first of all this is the Honda BF25 engine that I have on the back of this boat. Originally this boat came as a package and it had a Mercury 25 on the back with electric star and electric tilt trim. Um, but the motor didn't work out for me. Uh, it was part of a package deal. I managed to get rid of that particular engine because I think it had problems. And I just went out and bought something I trust, which is uh, a Honda. I'm pretty certain everyone has their own personal preferences, but I've always been a Honda guy. And that's why I bought a Honda. So it does mount to the transom. The transom is a long transom, so it's a 20 inch transom. So you need a long leg motor for this particular boat. Strangely, my friend's earlier version of the Yukon does have a, a lower transom and actually goes with a short leg rather than a long leg. So they did change that. Uh, what I do like about how this is set up is there's a tray at the back where you can actually put things and uh, there's some drain holes here as well. So you can actually store wet things and let them drain off the back. Um, I put my shoes up there, for instance. But so far, I'm still enjoying the running period with the Honda. I think I'm about two hours into the eight or nine hour process. And then I'll be able to open this motor up to its full capacity. But so far, so good. Uh, this model does have the hydraulic lift assist. So it's not as bad as you would think trying to pull up a 25 horse motor. Um, but I did really like the power tilt and trim on the Mercury. But there isn't an option for the Hondas as far as I know, unless you go to the bigger models. So I'm just going to switch over to my smaller camera. So it's going to be easier for me to get in and out of the boat and show you some of the details. So on the back of the transom, we obviously have the drain plug. Uh, we have a water intake and a um, pump outlet as well. Uh, and that's for the live well. They do provide a mounting base for your transducer, which I've got my mounted here. I do have a spare hole in the back of the boat where the old motor bolted on. So that wasn't a problem to actually run the cables, etc. So moving into the boat, we do have some good seating options for the, for the captain. Um, this is actually quite comfortable situation um, but obviously it's just a vinyl top inside this first compartment is the battery and does come with straps and everything else and I am thinking about putting some sort of seat on there currently I'm just running with a, a pad that I sit on it's a better picture of the shelf across the top uh, this is actually a rescue ladder so it's just a webbing ladder that you can throw over the side if you ever did get pitched out or someone else does for easier ingress the fuel tank does come with mounting kind of blocks there to keep the, the tank in place i did have to change mine slightly because this is a much bigger tank than i actually need this is 25 liter that came with the honda 
but it's it's not terrible as you can see this is the bilge pump and the water inlet and outlet for the live well which we'll come to all the cabling runs through these uh, compartments which are foam filled but you still can get cables through so I've managed to run my own cables across and these do unscrew quite easily so you can get in you can see where I've run all my cables it's my fish finder there is this rod storage which is kind of cute but it works well uh, this is the light mast for the front and there's a red green for the back as well this is uh, another locker uh, this is what I'm running for my seat at the moment which works quite well and this is the red green for the the rear uh, there's quite a lot of space in the lockers um, I'm not a big fan of this webbing strap I find it a little bit hard to pull sometimes so I've actually ordered some hardware to change that I did mount rod holders these are the Scotty types and I printed some one inch spacers on my 3d printer so they mounted a little bit better did also mount a single rod holder for my net I don't really like that option but it'll work for now the second locker I keep all my flotation uh, this is a very similar size to the other side I'd like to upgrade these to lockable storage so that if I do leave the boat out at the dock then I can just lock things away inside I have a second rod holder and these are the controls for the life well bilge pump and also the lighting you can either have a single white light or you can put all three navigation lights on for my mount of my fish finder um, I just printed a plate to put it on it just on clips um, but I can move this around this is just a Scotty base that I printed so I can actually move the fish finder to somewhere else if I need to in the future that just locks into place and so these cable tie blocks so going back to the Canadian compliance notice and the US Coast Guard as you can see it's three persons in Canada and four persons in the US so moving forward so I did just recently mount this seat which folds down and I do have it on a swivel base so you can lock it at different positions uh, there wasn't a great way to do this what I ended up doing is putting some plywood some treated plywood and then bolting onto this lid but obviously this lid is movable so I have ordered some some stuff to actually lock this down to this is the live well with the plug and the inlet which is used to cycle fresh water in to keep the fish cool and happy and there's, there's obviously the overflow uh, you can also use this as an ice chest I've been keeping sandwiches and a couple of uh, cans of pop and whatever inside which is really nice and then just up front there is no floor in here I just put a piece of matting in got an anchor cheap Chinese anchor did put a cleat up front and that's the light mounting point and just some line as well and to get to the floor obviously this is floored throughout and this is riveted not screwed which I was a little bit surprised about um, 
and this is the rear light mounting point. So one of the main benefits of this boat over other boats that I looked at was the, the floor. It makes a big difference compared to not having a floor, especially if you have pets. Um, they find it difficult scrambling around. I like the missing middle seat and having the seat side to side works really well. You can move uh, fore and aft quite easily on the boat. So I've been very happy with the fit and finish of the boat and I'll put some numbers down here so it gives you some more sort of idea how much I paid in Canada. Uh, the prices are COVID prices right now so everyone's overpaying for things. Not a great time to be buying things but you need a boat, you need a boat. I don't have a huge amount of experience with boats um, so I'm not an expert by any chance but I did do quite a bit of research before I purchased this particular model. Uh, I did look at Lund as an option and uh, a few other models that I can't, can't remember but they're all in the 14 foot range. Um, I do have two other friends, one has a Lund with a 25, 25 horse Mercury, another friend has a Yukon 140 with a Yamaha uh, 25 horse as well and obviously this one is more or less the same hull shape with a Honda 25. So I'd like to do a comparison of all three boats. Gives a good idea of each three different types of motor, two different types of boat, and how they all fare. So that should be interesting. And we'll also be doing obviously some fishing and I'll do some videos of that. And I want to do some camping in the boat. I also figured out that it's actually long enough for you to uh, lie in. So if you want to camp overnight, Esme and I are going to head off somewhere. Uh, we can either sleep in the boat or we can find a nice little island or somewhere quiet where we can fish and do overnight camps. What do you think, Guys, That's all I have time for right now. So if you do have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll certainly get back to you as soon as I can. So until next time, take care. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, leave me a comment, maybe a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.